With the massive new additions to sensitivity settings on controller, it can get a little hard to keep track of the best settings to use. Believe me when I say, it took me a long time to not only learn how the new settings work, but to also be able to find one that works for me. The thing is, it's not always easy to find the perfect sensitivity for yourself when you don't know where to start. Sure, you can use your old sensitivity, but some of the new additions to aiming in Fortnite could drastically improve your overall skills. So, it's really worth it to spend some time and just find the right one. What's going on guys? This is your guy. That's right, your friend. I'm back. Your guy Keith Allen. What's up? Hey, I want to let you know right now, if nobody is cheering for you, can I let you know something? I'm cheering for you. I'm rooting for you. I genuinely am your number one fan. And I don't care. I know some of you guys are trying to just fit in. You're trying to fit in with friends. You're trying to fit in with certain groups of people. And I'm here to encourage you today. You have to fit out. Seriously. Like, be yourself. Be yourself and don't care about what anybody thinks about you because there's greatness on the inside of you. And that is the truth. I want you to connect with me as soon as you can on my Instagram because I would love to hear from you guys. All right, we're about to get into this video. Today's video, we're going to be showing you guys some of the settings that big name pro controller players are using. We're going to get into why they chose this setting for their specific playstyle and how it can actually improve their gameplay in the long run. After all, changing your sensitivity can always have a very negative impact in the beginning. <laughs> also, don't forget to hammer that like button. Like, don't like, seriously get a hammer, you might destroy your computer. Yeah, don't do that. Um, but check out ProGuys.com for all the latest meta tactics, articles, and videos on all you need to know regarding the upcoming season. We also have 24-7 on-demand coaching, guys, available not some of the time, but all the time. So click that link in the description and let's hop into this. Now, you're probably wondering and even thinking, how did the pros deal with this entire situation? I told you, I could read minds. Now you're thinking, wow, this guy is so amazing. I know, I, I'm all in your mind. So pro players are so good that their sensitivities are pretty much like muscle memory for them. They could aim off a of pure instinct if they wanted to. And sometimes even with their eyes closed, as long as they have a general idea of where their target is. And by the way, kids, please do not try that at home. Keep your eyes open. This is only for flicks, of course. So how do they go about massive changes like this that can literally change the entire mechanics to aiming? Well, to put it simply, they adapt. Adapting is very important in a game such as Fortnite where everything is constantly changing with every single update. Being able to quickly get adjusted to something new without the worry of underperforming is so crucial to being successful. Now, although this sounds simple, adapting to the most recent Fortnite update, there ain't nothing easy about that. Let's be real. And if you think it's easy, you're tripping, okay? Yada yama. It's not easy. It gets on my nerves, actually. But we gotta do it. As mentioned before, sensitivities are so practiced and drilled into these pros that changing them can be a huge hassle. So, what are the majority of the pros doing? First, we're going to be taking a look at the well-known Faye Sway. His sensitivity is always one that stands out due to the fact that he's such a fast-paced player. Sway really knows how to stand out and make himself even seem like a keyboard and mouse player. So, his settings have to be something that can enable him to do so. The new Fortnite settings update added the mechanic of aim acceleration. This can actually make controller players play more like keyboard and mouse players as the aim acceleration can make turning almost instant, meaning you can do a full turn in a fraction of a second. So it's obvious that Faye Sway would change his settings to even further his skill in the game. So let's go ahead and take a look at his new settings. You want to do that? I knew you'd say yeah. Here we go. First, we see that his build and edit mode multiplier are set to 1.3x and he has advanced options on. This is what most controller pros have done as it allows them to have more variety in their aim. Moving on, his new horizontal and vertical sensitivity is at 85%, turning horizontal and vertical boost at zero, turning boost ramp time zero, and instant boost when building off. In terms of ADS settings, he has his horizontal and vertical speed set to 14%, while all his boosts are also set to zero. Now for advanced sensitivity. We see that he has his look dampening time on zero, while look input curve is exponential, aim assist strength on 100%, and finally legacy look controls off. So what do all these settings have to do with Sway's playstyle? Well, believe it or not, Sway is actually not a big fan of the new aim update due to the fact that the new settings offer a whole new way to aiming in Fortnite. For players like Sway, who play Fortnite almost every single day for like hours at a time, they can get really used to their aiming settings, especially when they've been playing on it for over a year. Therefore, Sway doesn't actually use many of the new settings, besides a few. Before the update, having your sensitivity on something like 8.8 doesn't actually mean 80% X and Y sensitivity. It really translates to a faster X and a slower Y. 
although very weird. This is the way Epic secretly made the aiming mechanics in the game, and it's what we all got used to. But Sway actually changed his settings to match up exactly. As we saw before, he had 85% horizontal and vertical look speed. So why did he change it? Hey, little Bobby, you're back. Well, the answer is quite interesting. Although he was used to playing on a slower Y sensitivity, making his X and Y the same is much easier for his muscle memory to get used to. And it can prove to be much more consistent in the long run. What you gotta think about, the long run. The thing is, let me put you on game real quick. You don't wanna be playing on completely different sensitivities for things as simple as just looking up and down. That can actually make it harder for you to learn it and adapt to it. By making these two the same, it's gonna take a little bit for Sway to get used to, but in the end, he's gonna be much better than he ever was before. Up next, we got Ghost Innocence, who is known for his overall skill in Fortnite. He's not just good at one thing, he's good at a lot of things. Innocence can be excelling in creative 1v1s, scrims, and pubs. He's an overall excellent player. He's really, really good, to say the least. So it's gonna be interesting to see what he plays on. One really cool aspect of his gameplay is how good his aim is. Innocence is known for being able to laser players and solo squads, and just simply dominating with this smooth and accurate aim. So let's take a look at his settings. Believe it or not, Innocence is actually not using the new advanced settings options. He has decided to stay on legacy mode and is currently using the following sensitivity 0.7x and Y.3 controller targeting sensitivity, 0.6 controller scope sensitivity, 2.0 building, and finally 1.8 edits. So why is Innocence using the classic legacy settings rather than switching over to the new advanced settings? Hey old man Rudy, you're back. Welcome. Well, it goes back to the main point that pros have been playing Fortnite for so long. Not as long as you've been around, old man Rudy. You're like so old, there's no number for you. We just call you old, uh, but you're amazing though. You know, they're pretty just used to their sensitivities by now. Their settings are just so greatly built into their muscle memory that switching it at this point would have a negative impact on their gameplay. Now, keep in mind that this is only the early stages of the new update. A lot of pro controller players won't be too keen to switching anything until they see that there's some kind of benefit in doing so. As time passes on, players are going to start to see the benefit in playing with aim acceleration and the other new changeable settings. Once this meta starts to catch up, brand new advanced settings will start being used by pro controller players everywhere, and the meta will change. We here at Pro Guys have been analyzing professional gaming for years, and we know that the new advanced aim is going to eventually take over. It's just that as of right now, it still hasn't shown what it can do yet. Innocent sensitivity, although not advanced, is still a pretty good one for anyone that is not comfortable with advanced settings. The classic 0.7x and Y is always a great choice that is fast, but not too fast where you can't aim. Inno always has his building on 2.0 to maximize the speed at which he can turn and maneuver when building, but he has edit mode on 1.8. This is most likely because he prefers to have more controllable and accurate edits rather than fast and snappy ones. His targeting is a nice and slow 0.3 that is easy to handle and aim with, while his scope is a much faster 0.6 that's great for fast and snappy quick scopes and flick shots with snipers. Overall, you know, we say that Innocence does play on some good settings, but with time, he's most likely gonna switch. Possibly one of the most innovating Fortnite players in the world, my guy, EJ Ladd, has actually decided to use the new boost mode. And oh my goodness, does he know how to put on a show. EJ Ladd has always been a high sensitivity player that's placed at or around 10 sensitivity on a controller. With the new advanced aim settings, he's actually decided to use the new acceleration mechanics. Keep in mind that EJ is also known for creating many popular building tricks, such as the EJ Dash, Infinite EJ Dash, and for making popular and improving many creative strategies. He does this, ladies and gentlemen, all on controller, and he makes it look so easy like he's on a keyboard and mouse. Fast flicks, insanely fast building tricks that you have to just slow down and see. You'd be like, did he just do that? Yeah, he did, and really well. And advanced maneuvers that even the other pro players have trouble doing. So, what sensitivity is the talented EJ using? Well, let's take a look and delve deep into why he chose this over all the others. Going in, we can see EJ players on 1.3 edit and build mode sensitivity while having advanced aiming options on. His look horizontal and vertical speed is set to 100% while his horizontal and vertical boost is set to 50%. Besides just having these on, EJ is actually using a really fast boost. 
having a 50% boost on 100% sensitivity is incredibly fast and very hard to control. So it's interesting that he's able to use this sensitivity without too many issues. His instant boost ramp time is set to zero, which makes the acceleration even more reactive and hard to control. Furthermore, he does have it off for building mode, meaning that he will be using his super fast settings in build mode and combat mode. The only part of his sensitivity that doesn't have boost mode enabled is his ADS settings, which are set to 15% horizontal and vertical along with 0% boost. His ADS turning boost ramp time is also set to 0.2 seconds, which basically means that it delays the speed at which his ADS changes velocity, basically giving him more flexibility in how he uses it. Moving on to the final advanced sensitivity has his look dampering time on zero, meaning that all of his aiming settings will be instant without absolutely zero delay. Fantastic. That means that it's super reactive and it can get hard to control. You know what's really interesting? Your face. No, I'm playing. What's really interesting about EJ settings is that he actually has his look input curve on linear, which is something we haven't even talked about throughout the majority of the video, mainly because it's not very practical. If you watched our advanced sensitivity explanation video, who watched that? Raise your hand if you watched it. Oh, okay, cool. We got a few of you. Cool. You would know that linear curve is extremely different than any other aiming mechanics that have been in Fortnite and can cause a lot of issues for players who've been playing on for a while. Exponential curve essentially picks up the speed at which you turn, making it so that you can start off slow and then get faster as you turn. Linear, however, makes it so that there is no pickup. Your aim is absolutely instant and there's no pickup in speed. Using linear as a player who has been playing Fortnite for months can really mess up your gameplay and make your aim feel very weird. Yes, very weird. So it's super interesting that EJ Ladd has turned it on and is actually able to use it very well. EJ's high X and Y sensitivity also allows him to be able to perform extremely complex and fast building maneuvers that before only PC players could do. Be sure to try all these settings and see which one works best for you. And don't be afraid, okay? Do not be afraid to tweak one if you find that it could be made better because everyone is different. Once again, guys, this is your guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I'm rooting for you guys. I really am. Connect with me as soon as you can on my Instagram. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. This is going to be your best year of your life. We hope that you guys enjoy this video. We spent a lot of time doing research, making sure that it's the best one out there. So be sure to leave a thumbs up and comment on what your thoughts are. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you on the next one.